India, the world's largest democracy, boasts a complex and fascinating electoral process. The vibrant tapestry of its political landscape is woven with intricate threads of constituency formation, candidate nomination, campaigning, voting, vote counting, and ultimately, the formation of the government. The end product of this elaborate democratic exercise is the election of the country's prime minister, the leader who stands at the helm of the Indian government. This process, known as the Lok Sabha elections, is a testament to India's commitment to democratic ideals and principles. Today, we delve into the detailed process of how the Prime Minister of India is elected through the Lok Sabha elections. We will journey through each step, demystifying the complexities and showcasing the marvel that is India's democratic machinery. In this video, we'll break down the intricate steps involved in electing the Prime Minister of India. Step 1. Constituency Formation India is divided into numerous constituencies, each represented by a Member of Parliament or MP for short. But how exactly are these constituencies formed? Simple, they are carved out based on population density and administrative convenience. This ensures that every region, every voice, every vote in India holds equal weight and importance in the democratic process. Picture the country as a giant jigsaw puzzle with each piece representing a constituency. Each piece is distinct, yet essential for the complete picture, just as each constituency is crucial to the democratic fabric of the nation. Constituencies are periodically reviewed and redrawn by an independent body known as the Delimitation Commission to reflect changes in population patterns. So, from the bustling cities to the serene rural landscapes, every corner of India has its own elected representative in Parliament. These constituencies form the basic unit of India's electoral process. Our step 2. Candidate Nomination Political parties nominate candidates to contest in these constituencies. This means that each party, after careful consideration and internal discussions, selects individuals who they believe can win the seat for their party. This selection process varies across parties and often involves a mix of seasoned politicians and fresh faces, all of whom should ideally embody the party's principles and objectives. But what about those who aren't affiliated with any political party? Well, independent candidates can also throw their hat in the ring. These individuals must meet certain eligibility criteria such as being a citizen of India, age 25 or above, and not holding any office of profit under the government of India or the government of any state. These nominated individuals are the ones who vie for the public's vote. They bring a variety of perspectives and agendas to the table, each hoping to resonate with the electorate and secure their place in the Lok Sabha. Step 3. Campaigning Once the candidates are finalized, they embark on rigorous campaigns to garner support from voters. This stage is pivotal as it allows candidates to communicate their vision and promises to the masses, aiming to sway public opinion in their favor. The campaigning process is an elaborate affair, often marked by a sense of urgency and excitement. It begins with political rallies where candidates take center stage to share their party's manifesto and their personal commitment to the constituency. These rallies can be massive drawing thousands of attendees or more intimate, catering to a specific demographic or local community. Regardless of size, they serve as an important platform for candidates to connect with potential voters. Beyond rallies, candidates also engage in door-to-door -door canvassing. This is a grassroots approach that allows them to interact with voters on a more personal level. It's an opportunity to listen to the issues that matter most to the community and to respond directly, showcasing their understanding and empathy. Speeches too play a vital role in the campaigning process. They're a chance for candidates to articulate their stance on key issues, to inspire with their words and to stir emotions. These speeches are often broadcasted across various media channels, extending their reach far beyond the immediate audience. In this digital age, Media outreach is also a significant part of the campaign. 
Candidates use social media platforms, television and radio to disseminate their message and engage with a broader audience. This includes everything from live debates and interviews to promotional videos and interactive sessions. Campaigning is a crucial part of the process where candidates communicate their ideas and promises to the voters. It's a test of their resilience, their charisma, and their ability to connect with the people they aspire to serve. This phase sets the tone for the election, influencing the choices that voters will make on polling day. Step 4. Voting. On the designated polling day, eligible voters cast their votes using electronic voting machines or through postal ballots. This is the moment when the power truly shifts into the hands of the people as they exercise their right to determine the country's leadership. India has over 900 million eligible voters, each with a single vote that carries equal weight. The process of voting is conducted with the utmost care to ensure fairness, transparency and security. On polling day, voters head to their designated polling stations where they are required to present a valid identification document. After their identity is verified, they proceed to cast their vote. In India, voting is primarily done through electronic voting machines or EVMs. These machines are simple to use, tamper-proof and provide quick results. The voter simply presses the button next to the symbol of the candidate they wish to vote for and their vote is recorded. For voters who are unable to physically attend the polling stations, there is the option of postal voting. This includes members of the armed forces stationed at remote locations, government officials on duty, and senior citizens above the age of 80. The postal ballot is a system that allows these voters to cast their vote remotely. They receive a postal ballot paper which they fill out and return by mail. This ensures that every eligible voter has a chance to participate in the electoral process regardless of their location or physical condition. The voting process in India is a testament to the country's commitment to uphold the democratic principle of one person, one vote. It is a massive logistical exercise, but one that is essential to ensure the voice of the people is heard. Every vote cast is a step towards deciding the country's leadership. It is a celebration of the democratic spirit, a moment when each citizen has a say in shaping the future of the nation. This is the power of a vote, the power of democracy. Our step five, counting of votes. After polling concludes, the votes are counted in a transparent manner. In the world's largest democracy, this is no small feat. Each vote, whether cast through an electronic voting machine or a postal ballot, is meticulously counted under the watchful eyes of representatives from each political party. This process is overseen by the Election Commission of India, an independent body that ensures the integrity and fairness of the elections. The counting of votes is a thrilling moment, full of suspense as the fate of candidates hangs in the balance. As the numbers roll in, the candidate with the highest number of votes in each constituency emerges as the winner. It is a reflection of the people's choice, their voice resonating through the ballot box. The counting of votes signals the end of the election and the beginning of a new leadership. Step 6. Formation of Government The party or coalition that wins the majority of seats in the Lok Sabha forms the government. This is a critical juncture in the electoral process. Let's delve a bit deeper into this. When the dust of the elections settles and the results are announced, it's time to see who has won the majority. The magic number here is 272. The minimum number of seats required in the Lok Sabha, a house of 543, to form a government. Now. If a single party manages to secure these many seats, it's a clear victory. Their leader is generally appointed as the Prime Minister. But politics, my friends, is seldom this straightforward. When no single party achieves the magic number, that's when we see the drama of coalitions unfolding. Parties, both big and small, negotiate, bargain and join forces to cross the majority threshold. This is known as a coalition government. 
the leader of the majority party within this coalition is usually appointed as the Prime Minister. Once the Prime Minister is decided, the President of India officially appoints them. The newly appointed Prime Minister then takes the oath of office and secrecy, administered by the President. The Prime Minister then forms their Council of Ministers and together they set off to govern the world's largest democracy. And there you have it. The detailed process of how the Prime Minister of India is elected through the Lok Sabha elections, a cornerstone of India's vibrant democracy. It's a journey that involves millions of citizens, thousands of candidates, hundreds of constituencies, and one leader at the helm steering the ship that is India. It's an embodiment of the democratic principles that India stands proud on, a testament to the power of every single vote. So, the next time you cast your vote, remember, you're not just choosing a representative, you're playing a part in choosing the leader of the nation.